Hi, this is Mrs. Wiederholt, and welcome to my lesson video on absolute value transformations. Now let's get started. For any parent function, there are three types of transformations. There are dilations, horizontal shifts, and vertical shifts. And now we will learn about each type individually. First, we will talk about dilations. The formula for this equation would be y equals a times the absolute value of x. Now remember, the parent absolute value function is y equals the absolute value of x. When you have this number before the absolute value of x, it means one of three things. It means there could be a vertical stretch to the graph. It means there could be a vertical shrink, or it means there could be a reflection. Now, if the A value is greater than 1, that's when we have what we call a vertical stretch. Now, it's a little different than you might think. It makes the graph narrower, okay? Almost like you were taking, putting a string on either end and lifting each end of this, making it narrower. Now, if A is greater than 0 but less than 1, that's when we have what we call a vertical shrink. Now, what this does is this makes the graph wider. It's almost like you're putting a lid on top of the V and you're smushing it flat or smashing it flat. And we call that a vertical shrink. Now, if your A value is actually less than zero, meaning it's a negative number, that's when we have a reflection. And that's literally a reflection of the parent function or of the graph over the x-axis. So your V would be upside down. That's a reflection. Now let's look at some examples. Now in our first example, I want us to look at y is equal to 3 times the absolute value of x. Now what I did is I have four ordered pairs here. All I did is say what if x is 1? That means I would have the absolute value of 1, which is 1, times 3 equals 3. So my y value is 3. So then I said what if I have an x value of negative 1? Well neg the absolute value of negative 1 is 1 and 1 times 3 is 3. And so I did the same thing. I said, what if x is 3? What if x is negative 3? Now let's plot those points. Once you've plotted those points, you can now draw your line through the points. So do you see how by having an a value that's greater than 1, my graph has gotten narrower? Like I said, that's called a vertical stretch because it's like you're pulling it from the top and making it narrower. Now let's look at an example when your A value is greater than zero but less than one, as in one half of the absolute value of X. Once again, I have written some ordered pairs. I said, what if X is two? So the absolute value of two is two and one half of two is one. I took the absolute value of negative 2, and the absolute value of negative 2 is positive 2, and positive 2 times 1 half is 1. So I did the same thing when x is 4 and when x is negative 4. So now we can plot those points and that line. Now, do you see how this curve or this um, graph is flatter? That's because it has, it's like it's been smashed, it has been shrunken. So when your A value is between 0 and 1, it will flatten or shrink your graph. Now let's look at our last example. In this example, our A value is less than 0, meaning it's a negative number. In this case, negative 1. Now I have the ordered pairs that I've written down here. If x is 1, well the absolute value of 1 is 1 and the negative 1, excuse me, and negative 1 times 1 is negative 1. So then I did the absolute value of negative 1, which is 1, 
and then I multiplied it times negative 1, and that's how I got my y value. I did the same for when x is 3 and x is negative 3. So now let's plot that. Now do you see, here's my new, my new graph, and do you see how all it did is it's now reflected over the x-axis. It's like a mirror image of our parent function. Now let's talk about horizontal shifts. And the equation for that is y equals the absolute value of x minus h, where h is the x-coordinate of the vertex. Now remember, the parent absolute value function has a vertex of 0, 0. So the h value is 0. And if we look back up here, x minus 0 would just be x. Now, if the h value is less than 0, meaning if it's negative, if it's a negative number, then your graph shifts to the left. And so here is our example. y equals the absolute value of x minus negative 4. Do you see how my h value is a negative number? Now before we graph it, why don't we simplify the minus a negative number? So that would be y equals the absolute value of x plus 4. x minus a negative 4 is the same as x plus 4. Now, at this point, when it's simplified, I know that it looks like you're saying x plus 4, but you're really saying x minus, remember minus is part of the formula, and you're subtracting that negative 4. So what that would look like graphically is we would move our vertex over to the left 4 units. So there's the new vertex, and then that would be your new absolute value graph. Now, what if your h value is greater than 0? If that's the case, then your whole graph will shift to the right. Now, here's an example of an equation. We have y equals x minus positive 4. Now, when you write that, we don't usually show minus a, neg excuse me, minus a positive number. So we would just write y equals the absolute value of x minus 4. Now again, this one looks like you're subtracting 4, but remember you're really subtracting that positive 4. And because the h value is positive, we will be moving our graph to the right. So I'm going to go up here and count to the right 4 units. And there's my new vertex. And there's my new graph. Now let's look at vertical shifts. Now this equation looks like this. We have y equals the absolute value of x plus k, where k is the y-coordinate of the vertex. Now remember, on the previous page, I said that the parent absolute value function has a vertex of 0, 0. And I told you that the, the h value is the x-coordinate and the k value is the y coordinate. So if your k value is less than zero, meaning if your k value is negative, then that means your graph will shift down. Now the example we have of this is y equals the absolute value of x minus three. So that means we are going to take the vertex and we are going to move it down three units and this will be our new vertex. So a negative k value shifts the whole absolute value graph down. Now, if the k value is greater than zero, if it's a positive number, that means the graph will shift up. And the example we have of this is y equals the absolute value of x plus three. So this means we would move our vertex up three units on the graph, and then there would be our new absolute value graph. Now, if we were to put all these transformations together, 
your formula or your equation for the absolute value function would look like this. It would be y equals a times the absolute value of x minus h plus k. Where a tells you if your graph is going to shrink or stretch or be reflected. The h value tells you if your graph is going to move or shift to the left or to the right and your k value tells you if your graph is going to shift up or down. So now let's look at our first example right here. What are the transformations of y equals negative 2 times the absolute value of x minus 3 plus 5? Well because the a value is negative I know it's going to be reflected. And because the a value is greater than 0, excuse me, because it's greater than 1, I know that it's going to be a vertical stretch. Now I'm going to look at my h value. Now because this says x minus 3, I know that it is x minus a positive 3, which tells me my graph is going to shift to the right. How many units? three units. Now I look at my k value which is plus 5 which means my graph will shift up five units. Now you try the next one. Pause the video, see if you can get all the transformations and then come back and check your work. So how did you do? Well let's take a look at it. Because the a value is negative 1, it is reflected, but it's neither a vertical stretch or a vertical shrink. Because the h value is negative 2, now remember the formula is x minus the h value. So if you see x plus 2, it really means x minus negative 2, which means the h value is negative therefore you shift it to the left two units. Now for my k value it's minus 3 which means you shift it down three units. Now that's everything you need to know about transformations of absolute value functions. I hope this video has helped and I look forward to working with you again. Bye bye!